So when do I need planning permission for a garden room? So there are two elements to garden rooms uh, that you need to bear in mind. Um, first one is about the dimensions of the building, the physical dimensions, the, the height, the width, the proportion of the garden it covers. Um, and there's a lot of information online about that, but the most useful resource uh, is the planning portal. So you can go there and look up um, about the dimensions. But in headline terms, assuming you have your permitted development rights and aren't in a conservation area or with a list of building, etc., um, you can cover up to 50% of the, of, the, of the plot minus the land for the house itself in out buildings. Um, but there has to be a reasonably necessary test. Um, so you couldn't just cover everything in an outbuilding and then sort of retrospectively invent a way to use that building. You need to think about the building, whether it's really reasonably necessary. The other side is the use. So the use is where it's important to understand two different words. One of them is incidental and one is ancillary. Incidental buildings are the ones that have permitted development rights. Ancillary always requires planning permission. So we're going to go into a little bit more detail on that. Ancillary um, is something that's an extension of the house itself where you would um, be doing an activity within the outbuilding that you would normally do in the house. So for example, sleeping and cooking would be things that you would normally do in the house and that would require planning permission. But the incidental uses would be you know, things like workshops, um, a swimming pool, um, a, a greenhouse, um, potting shed. All of those things would be incidental uses and wouldn't need planning permission. Um, so there's the two sides you need to always be mindful of, the dimensions, which you can find online quite easily, and then the use itself. And that's often the one that people fall foul of. So for example, there was a court case in 2021 um, where a personal trainer had erected um, an outbuilding um, to use as a gym initially. And I think that over the lockdown periods, the, he started then taking on clients um, and having those um, doing running sessions at his, um, at his house in the, in the garden. There was access through a separate um, alleyway at the back. And over time, the use intensified and intensified. And my point being is that at some point, a sort of material change of use happened where that became a place of business, not an extension of his house. And so the, the need for planning permission was engaged. And to cut a long story short, that, um, that case was required uh, planning permission. In this case, it was refused because it was considered to be so intensive a use that it was harmful to the immunity of people around. But there are plenty of examples where people can use an outbuilding. For example, um, if you are um, if you're a childminder, if you're running a childminding um, business from home and, and, and looking after less than six children, which is in line with the national guidance, um, that outbuilding could, I'm sure, be used as an extension of that. As long as you're not needing to bring on any staff and then intensify the site over the threshold, then that's unlikely to need planning permission. So what I'm saying here is you, you shouldn't just make assumptions, you should always take professional advice um, and get in touch with the council or a planning consultant who might be able to assist you in offering advice either formally or informally or assisting you in building a strategy to secure permission if it's required. New Garden Room Company. More space for your life.